we did it. <laughs> we reached the end of Intro to Linguistics. Thank you so much for all of the time and all of the effort that you've put into the class. In this last video, I want us to think a little bit of how the knowledge you've gained in the class can have a positive impact in your career and in the lives of others. So in summary, why do we study linguistics? First of all, because it's really cool. Look at all of the languages that we have seen examples of in this class. Uh, it's 180, actually. So we've seen examples from ancient Egyptian, from Dothraki, from many indigenous languages like Guarani, for example, and Chickasaw from the US. We have examples from Luganda in Africa, from many sign languages like Lesko. Um, we had many examples for Tagalog uh, morphology, for Quechua phonology, and for the revitalization of Wampanoag, for example. So as we can see, we covered a lot of terrains. And sure enough, we study linguistics because it's uh, language is really cool and has a lot of really interesting patterns. And especially because research is still ongoing, we're still trying to figure out how human languages work. If you're majoring in linguistics, these are the classes for the next two quarters. And as you can see, you, you might be able to study more about morphological patterns or maybe how language acquisition or revitalization works. Maybe you're interested in how um, you can find social patterns in language and connected to the societies around you. Maybe you want to learn more about computational linguistics. I'm going to be teaching this class in the spring, the Link 48. So if you're uh, majoring in linguistics, sure, there's a lot that is still left for us to study. But whether you're majoring in linguistics or not, I want you to try to think how the knowledge that you've gained here can uh, inform your work and maybe how it can inform how your work relates to, to others and to the languages that they use. This is an example from an article by John Rickford called Language and Linguistics on Trial, hearing Rachel Jantel. She was a witness in the Trayvon Martin murder case, and she spoke African-American English. And this made it so that people tried to dismiss a lot of her testimony because they thought it was basically broken English. I invite you to read the article. Um, it has a lot of examples of the interaction of linguistics and courts and how Creole languages are treated in courts. There is an example from Australia. Australia has a part called the Northern Territory, which has a lot of um, Aboriginal languages. And there was one witness to a crime that said there was a half moon shining when some crime happened. <clears throat> he, um, the opposing side, interpreted this as if it was Australian English and tried to say that the person's testimony was not valid because there wasn't a, full, a half moon that day. There wasn't a moon that was 50% of illumination. The person was speaking in Aboriginal English, a kind of Creole of English that is used in Northern Australia. And thankfully, the court had an interpreter who understood the difference between uh, the Creole Aboriginal English and Australian English. And clarified that in Aboriginal English, half actually means small part of the moon. So. The, the correct interpretation of half moon shining should be something like crescent moon. Because the person interceded, the court asked the witness to draw the moon and essentially to draw a little sliver of a moon. And this validated the testimony. Notice how the, the knowledge that Creole languages and uh, the standard uh, languages of government are different helped this person in their testimony, helped the testimony be valid in court. This is unfortunately very common with Creole languages, where um, the, the law, police forces, courts misinterpret them. This is an example from Jamaican Creole English uh, from a transcript of a, of a police interview. What the person said was, when I heard the bap bap, the shots, I fell to the ground, and then I started to run. Me uh, drop a groan. I fell to the ground. The person transcribing the speech misunderstood it and thought that the, the person said, when I heard the shot, I dropped the gun and then I run. Notice that there's a lot of problems with the interpretation. For example, thinking that this verb is the present when the default in English Creole languages is the past. But the main problem is that the person said dropped to the groan and the person transcribing it understood drop the gun. 
which was not what the person originally said, and it would be way more incriminating. And it's because of a lack of understanding between the relationship of between Jamaican Creole and um, the English spoken in the UK. Finally, an example from New York. Um, and before we start, we'll go to the other side of the ocean to Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone in Western Africa has a Creole language called Creo. For example, what is your name is Wotin Nayonam, your name, and how are you is how you do. So it is a Creole language related but separate from English. In a case in 2003, a complainant from Sierra Leone was in New York and took a case to court, but the person only spoke in Creole. And the opposing side said that Creole is not some kind of language that you go to university and study. It's like a patois. It's English with a bad accent. So they said that the court should refuse to provide a translator for Creole, which would obviously affect the complainant's capacity to defend, to, to present their case. And thankfully, there was someone there who understood the relationship between Creole and English and managed to, to convince the court that although Creole is related to English, it is separate and distinct and cannot be readily understood without an interpreter. And therefore, an interpreter for Creole was provided. So you can see how something very simple, like knowing the difference between Creole languages and the relationship with the um, standard written languages, can make a difference in someone's life. And uh, if you are in a position where you can have a positive impact in someone life, someone's life, you should definitely take that opportunity. Please, so this quote is from Ferdinand de Saussure, who was the person who invented, um, who proposed the difference between signifier and signified. I want you to uh, give it a quick read. Please pause the video. Mm-hmm. Yes, linguistics is uh, is very unique, and there's no other field in which there's so many absurd notions, prejudices, mirages, and fictions. Uh, and the task of the linguist might be to dispel them as best as they can. So we saw that just in the last slide, saying that um, Creole is just you know bad English, English with a bad accent. This is not true, and it's part of our work to dispel those myths and to try to make sure that you know people have access to to their human rights people can um have access to proper defenses and and in court and so forth in the end we know many instances in society where language can be used as an instrument of power and many times this is a one-sided instrument of power so i want you to try to think of how um you can use the knowledge of language in your field to try to make things better. Um, in computer science, for example, there's many uh, natural language processing tools for about 80 or 90 languages in the world. And for most of the other languages in the world, there's absolutely nothing. So you can see how if you know any of these languages, you can use a cell phone, but you can use it if you only speak one of these thousands of languages. Ultimately, why do we study linguistics? This is um, a phrase from a Maori leader in the early 1800s, Meri Aroto. He aha te mea nui o te ao, māku te eki atu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. If I was asked what was the most important thing in the world, I would be compelled to reply, it is the people, the people, the people. Languages are cool, but we uh, cannot forget that what we're here for is for the people who speak the languages. Um, many indigenous cultures, the health of the language and the health of the people are linked. And we, uh, we should be sure that the speakers of these languages have access to all of their human rights. We should be sure that uh, all the languages have a place in society and the speakers of the languages are respected. That, I think, is the main reason why we should study linguistics. And with that, I thank you for your time. Um, thank you so much for all of your support, for all of your work. Uh, I apologize for the many mistakes, which I'm sure I uh, made during the class. And I hope it was useful to you. And I thank you for your time. This is the end of Ling 1, Introductory Linguistics.